is about the bonding. So let's have a look at all types of bonding in a nutshell. So ionic bonding is the bond that we can see between uh, metals and non-metals, where metals lose electrons to form a positively charged ions, and non-metals gain the electrons to form negatively charged ions. This uh, kind of bond is very strong because of the uh, strong electrostatic interaction between oppositely charged ions. Covalent bonding is the next type where we can find this type of bonding between non-metals uh, only. So it has to be between non-metal and non-metal, um, where electrons here um, are not gained or lost, but they are shared between the uh, two atoms. Uh, remember that this is how we draw the cross dot and cross diagram for covalent bonding, uh, where we share the electrons between the two uh, non-metals. Uh, these are strong bonds as as well because the strength of the bond comes from the strong electrostatic interaction between the positively charged and nuclei of the two elements that form the bond and uh, between the shared electrons. And finally, there is the metallic bonding. We find metallic bonding in metals where um, we metallic bonding comes from the electrostatic interaction, the strong electrostatic interaction between the delocalized electrons and between the positively charged ions of the metal that are formed. The structure of the ionic compound. So ionic compounds have a regular lattice structure called the giant ionic lattice, where the ions for, uh, form a closely backed regular lattice uh, arrangement, and they are very there are very strong electrostatic interaction all around the structure. The ionic compounds will not conduct electricity as solids because the ions are not free to move. They are joined together strongly was in a giant um, uh, ionic lattice uh, and they cannot carry the charge. However, when molten, the ions will become free to move and they can carry charges. And if dissolved in um, aqueous solution, they also, the ions also will be free to move so they can conduct electricity. The uh, difference between simple covalent molecule and giant covalent structures. So simple covalent molecules are these small molecules which have covalent bonding like oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, and so on. And they have a strong covalent bond between the atoms and the molecule, but they have very weak intermolecular forces of attraction between the molecules. This is why they have low melting point. This is different from a metal, from um, ionic compounds which have high melting point because uh, here the electric and the um, uh, the intermolecular force of attraction are very low so they would need less energy to break these bonds and so um, low melting point they do not conduct electricity because there uh, there are no free uh, ions or electrons to move uh, through the structure and to conduct electricity or to carry the charge uh, polymers are a, some, a type of simple covalent molecule, but they have um, high uh, molecular mass. So they have higher melting point because the higher the molecular mass, the higher the intermolecular forces of attraction between the molecules. So they will need more energy to break these forces. And then giant covalent structures, a uh, very common question in the exam is to ask you to compare between the um, uh, some of the giant covalent structures like diamond and graphite. So diamond is a very common and um, um, question in the exam, where um, for a diamond, uh, it's one of the allotropes of carbon. It only contains uh, covalent bonding. There is no intermolecular force of attraction because there are they are giant structure. They are not simple molecules. Each carbon atom is bonded to four other uh, bonds or four other carbon atoms. Uh, so there are no free electrons uh, to move through the structure and they do not conduct electricity. They have uh, they are very hard, hard and they have high melting point because of the uh, presence of the covalent bonding which needs very high energy to break. 
Graphite is another type of giant covalent structure where graphite is different from diamond in that uh, each carbon atom in graphite is bonded to three other carbons, which means there is an extra carbon which is delocalized or free to move through the structure so it can carry the charge. And uh, this is why graphite can conduct electricity. Also, they, um, the, uh, it's slippery and um, layers, uh, it formed of layers and it's slippery. The layers can move past each other because there is weak intermolecular forces of attraction or weak forces of attraction between these layers, so the layers can slide past each other. Fullerene is one of the allotropes of carbon, and it has this shape, which is uh, the uh, like a ball. Uh, fullerene C60 fullerene is the Buckminster uh, fullerene. It's a very common question in the exam as well. It's not a giant structure. It's C60 fullerene, which means it has 60 carbon atom to make quite a big molecule and it has low melting point because of the low intermolecular forces of attraction between the molecules. It's also slippery because of these intermolecular forces of attraction, so the different molecules can slide past each other or can move, so they are slippery. The fullerene uses, they can be used in drug delivery and can be used as industrial, catalysis, in industrial catalysis or as a catalyst, and they also um, act as good lubricants. There is the fullerene nanotubes and they can conduct electricity and thermal energy and they have high tensile strengths. They also can be used in electronics. Metallic bonding and properties of metallic. Remember that the nature of the metallic bonding is the reasons for the properties of the metals. So most metals are solid at room temperature because of the strong electrostatic interaction between the delocalized electrons and the positively charged ions. And they can conduct uh, electricity and heat. Um, this is because of the delocalized electrons. So the delocalized electrons which can move through the structure, they can carry the charge so they can conduct electricity and also these electrons are responsible for the heat conductivity and most metals are malleable they can be hammered into shape as we can see because of the arrangement of the uh, particles so they can um, actually be hammered into shape they can be uh, slipped past each other Alloys, um, if you want to give uh, more uh, strings to your metal, then you can mix it with another elements where alloys is a mixture of, um, uh, it's not a pure metal, but it's a metal mixed with another uh, metal. So as you can see, or another element, it doesn't have to be metal. So the other element here, as you can see, has a different um, size, and this will give strings to the alloy because now the layers cannot actually be moving easily by each, each other and it becomes more brittle while the um, pure metal is more malleable. Nanoparticles, what's very important about nanoparticles is to know that nanoparticles are very small in size and you need to know that the size of the nanoparticle is between 1 and 100 nanometer. They have high surface area to volume ratio and this is why they can be used to make catalysts and to deliver drugs into the cell where they are needed and they are also used in electronic circuits for computer chips because they have very 